we said we wouldn't let the issue go. So we're taking another look at the outrageous situation that sees some of our children suffering from third world diseases, diseases almost eradicated in most developed countries. Now last week we launched Project Tamariki, Marae Investigates year-long campaign on children's issues. We brought you the battle of Kaitai GP Dr Lance O'Sullivan who's raging against the damp and cold homes he believes are putting our kids in danger. It's a type of preventive medicine. You can see quite a bit of draught coming in, which yeah. makes a cold home. Yeah. Dr O'Sullivan's checking up on patient Kuda Harris and diagnosing the health of her home. I don't think it's fair that some children in this country can enjoy a quality home and a warm and safe home and a healthy upbringing and others can't. For the past two decades, New Zealand's children have suffered from a continuing rise in preventable respiratory, skin and gastro infections. And it's frustrating health specialists across the country, including Dr O'Sullivan. The big issue is it's falling disproportionately on a, on a section of our society. You know, it's poor brown kids. Health specialists and welfare groups are demanding action from the government to stop the rise of New Zealand's third world diseases. But Dr O'Sullivan isn't waiting for the authorities to act. If we've got three homes in Kaitai that we can identify that need immediate um, work and improvements to make that, ho that home healthy, three in a year, that's my goal. Well, many of you felt as outraged as Dr O'Sullivan. How tragic that in this day and age children can fall victim to life-threatening illnesses such as the 12-year-old featured in that story. Would Mariah Investigates consider organising a nationwide appeal to help the doctor finance the three homes he's discovered in need of repair and insulation this year in more concrete ways? If people don't start to help one another, then the status quo stays the same. But if we take an active role and help where we can, we change the odds tremendously. Carpi, Dr O'Sullivan, I'm keen to donate. How can I from Aussie? Big ups to this man for his work in Ngāpuhi Nui Tonu. He just keeps on keeping on. Lucky to have him. Yes, and we weren't the only ones getting a big response. Joining us live from Kaitaia is Dr Lance O'Sullivan. And in the studio, we have Associate Minister of Housing and Health, Tariana Turia. We'll start with you, uh, Dr O'Sullivan. What sort of response have you had to the story? Oh, tēnā kōrua, Mariama. Uh, excellent response. Overwhelming and, and just quite uh, mind-blowing, actually. You know, as you've already mentioned, there's been offers of support from both um, overseas and elsewhere in the country. Uh, from all types too, Miriam, it's not just um, Māori communities that are, or whānau that are upset about this, this particular um, problem we have here in Kaitai, which is not unique to Kaitai, mm -hmm. it's um, also a lot of non-Māori. Indeed. I mean, you want to say, you, you say you want to fix three houses a year. What does that actually mean in practice? Well, I, well, I think the big issue is we, you know, changing the world can be a struggle, you know, for, for many people to get a grasp of. but. What I would hope we could do is change the world of three families, which, you know, the downstream effects of that may be that we've got healthier children, grandchildren. Uh, so what, what I'm hoping and planning to do is to identify the three homes that I, you know, I and others that will help support me f feel are unhealthy and look at a way in which we can make them healthier. So three homes in, uh, by the end of the year. And what are we talking about? You're using your own money, you're going to fix the houses up, make them new? Hey, look, this started off as a, as a local approach. I went to local businesses and said, look, could you donate materials, time, to, and, and help us to, you know, go and look at things like spouting, roofing, um, windows and glazing and things like that. You know, really, this, uh, the, the response from Marae Investigates programme last week has shown that, you know, these are actually there, people there's out, a, There's elsewhere. a lot of will out there, isn't there? What, what, what do you Massive. want to see? Do you want to, I mean, we saw a house last week, for example, yep. that had plastic in the windows. Do yep. you want to fix those houses, uh, you know, put glass panes in, make them new again, paint them, fix yep. up all the, the problems that that house has and make it, as I said before, do you want to make it like new? Is I think we, we need to look at what will make it healthier. Now, a brand new house may not be, you know, realistic, but, you know, healthier um, options would be replacing that plastic, um, stopping the leaks that are occurring in the house and, um, yeah, making it a healthier home for the, the child that lives in that house. Absolutely. Now, Carmen asked you last week, it's not really your job, is it, as a GP, to be doing this. Why are you? You know, I think about it. I, you know, you think about... Um, 
my job, I'm responding to people that are getting sick, uh, and, and we do our best to, to get them better. But if we know they're going back to unhealthy homes that are just going to make them represent to me or to the hospital, then it's frustrating. And I guess I was stepping out of my consult room and thinking, where else can we, you know, where can we in intersect the, the problems? Okay, well, this is a good place to, to bring you in, Tariana Tudia. Tēnā koe. Tēnā koe, Mariana. It's not Dr Lance O'Sullivan's job to do this, to fix up these houses, is no, it? No, It's no, the it government's isn't. job. And, you know, to be fair, there has been a lot of money invested in the North over the last probably 20 years in looking at housing and looking at doing up people's homes. But there hasn't been enough investment. And I think that um, Lance is to be commended. Absolutely. You know, for taking... What sort of investment is needed then? Well, we've already had quite a bit of money invested in doing up houses and addressing the issues that he's talking about. And so the government has moved towards um, insulating houses, making them warmer, putting in heat pumps, putting in um, log fires where they can. But it's still not enough, is it? What well, it needs doesn't to seem to be enough. And um, I guess that we need to be taking an intersectoral approach, which is what Lance is talking about. The government operates in silos, and there's not enough interconnection and interaction between the various agencies. And this is why Fano Order is, is Absolutely. coming into action right now, isn't it? Absolutely. Is, is there real political will, though, to see Fano Order work? Well, you know, in the end we've only been going just 18 months and it takes a long time to get these things off the ground and to be able to get buy-in from the various agencies. We're working really hard at doing that. Ideally, it would have been really good to have had an agreement where instead of trying to get the agencies uh, to change the way they're operating was basically to have got a budget to have then been able to implement that in the way we know it needs to happen. Does Whānau Order need to have its own ministry? Does it need to be taken out of TPK? Well, we're certainly looking at a commissioning agency at present. We're looking at whether that's a, a good idea, a standalone agency, uh, to address the issues of Whānau Order. But we will still have the problems we've got now mm. if the agencies themselves are not committed to change the way in which they practice. And part of the problem is, for a long time, We've got away with just counting numbers, mm, looking mm. at outputs, but we don't look at the outcomes. And we focus on individuals. We don't look at whole families, which is what Dr O'Sullivan's talking yeah, about. Yeah, and, and so how do we help Dr O'Sullivan? Well, you, you know, I'm listening to what he's saying about these three houses, and I will be getting my housing person to contact him to see if there is any way in which the government, because it is the responsibility of government in these cases, to step in to see how we can help. Lance O'Sullivan, what do you want to see the government do? I mean, we have Tariana Turia sitting here right now. Is there anything that you want to say or ask? Yeah, kia ora, kia ora fire, Tariana. Kia ora. Um, the, yeah, I, I guess your comment about the uh, intersectorial and the multi-department um, approach to it is really important. We have um, Housing New Zealand, Work and Income New Zealand. We have health, to, health mm. um, areas that we all need to work together. Um, we, all of our business overlaps mm. and uh, we need to be working with each other. I need to know uh, better how WINS and Housing New Zealand mm. work so that I can help assist our, our whānau um, into healthier homes and environments. Mm. Kia ora. And, you know, and I think it's probably important to say that part of the problem over the years has been that we have funded m major numbers mm. of providers. I think Kaitaia might have 48 different providers in the social and health sector. And what we need really is to be looking at what the needs of that community are and how we respond to that. Mm. And having 48 providers doesn't make sense to me, and particularly when I understand that more than five of them are just doing budgeting. Uh, we need more than a budgeting approach to this. We need a developmental approach. And so we need to look at all the money that's going in there and changing the focus and we need to figure out why it's happening. I mean, it is disturbing to hear that New Zealand is, is the only developed country recording a rise in infectious and preventable diseases. Yes. I mean, we, we saw this young fellow, um, Michael Paraha, with mm. rheumatic fever. It's absolutely shocking. How on earth did this happen in this country? Well, it is appalling, you know, to think that in the year 2012, 
that we here in this country are dealing with third world diseases and it is a disease of poverty. So, you know, as governments, we've got to stop pretending that there isn't a poverty line, mm. that we need to be addressing this issue. Is it bigger than the politicians? Do Māori need to take responsibility for their own health here? Well, you know, I'm a firm believer in us taking back responsibility for ourselves and not relying on the government. But when you think at our history and you think about all our resources being taken from us, by successive governments over the years, then it's been difficult then for our people to lift our sights and believe that we can do this for ourselves. And when we don't have the resources anymore, that's, that's hard work. Mm. But I think that we can going into the future. If we start getting families to acknowledge that they deserve better than what they've got, to start believing in themselves and what's important for them, which is what Whānau Ora is essentially about, then I believe that families will start standing up and saying, this is not good enough for it me and my change. kids. But do, I mean, this is kind of a difficult uh, concept, but do Māori need to look at changing some cultural practices? Where is the line between um, living with extended whānau and overcrowding? Uh, do we, for example, need to, I don't know, reduce incidences of, of hongi, for example? Mm. Do we need to change mm. our cultural practices? Well, I'm not a, a believer in changing cultural practice, but what I do believe is that we have to understand how these situations eventuate and what we need to do about it. It's not so much families living together, it's actually our sleeping arrangements. So in our families, we might have three or four kids in one bed. That is a great recipe mm. for rheumatic fever to be transmitted. And we do have to wrap here, but just very quickly, are we likely to hear any announcements up, leading up to the budget on housing? Well, certainly we're looking at addressing issues around rheumatic fever and we can expect uh, to hear more about that in budget. And we're looking at changes in housing as well. All right, excellent. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much, Tariana Tudia and Dr Lance O'Sullivan.